the supper means one thing, a feast of succulent springtime lamb. But why do lamb chops come in all shapes and sizes? To try and clear up this woolly issue, I'm on my way to Laverstoke Park, an organic and biodynamic farm in Hampshire, home to nearly one and a half thousand sheep. Luckily, I've arrived just in time to see one of farmer Nigel Smith's ewes giving birth. You can just see a foot coming there now. Push, there we head to head. Head. Yeah, we've got one foot and head, I think, at the minute. Here we go. She's pushing. Here it comes. Here. Done. Look at go. that. She can turn around and give it a lick. Yeah. Okay. So, should we go and check it now then? Yep, let's go and have a look. It's done well, look. Done. So look at that, new life. So what are you going to do for checking over? Just give it a little rub up, get yeah. nice and warm. Yeah, so they're all breathing fine, all nice and lively. Make sure they're all, their, all their limbs and everything are fine how they should be. So these lovely little guys have just been born. You're never going to eat them like this. You're never going to slaughter a lamb this old, are you? No, of course not. You'd give them a bit of a life first. Because uh, if you've sorted it now, there's nothing on it, is there? No, no, no it's a baby lamb. It's just, it's a baby. Although a niche market, some suckling lambs are slaughtered and served up as an expensive delicacy when they're just a few weeks older than this little fella. But these chaps can look forward to a longer life, but they'll have to go through a delicate procedure to keep their meat sweet. So this little fella here, I oh, see, yeah, right. So put the little rubber band on here. Yep. And that just, what, cuts the blood supply off? Cuts the blood supply. Just shrivels up. Mm. Drops off. Drops off, 10 days that's going to help improve the flavour of the lamb. Yeah. Because if they keep their testicles, yeah. all those hormones yeah. might make it a bit gamey. So no testicles, better tasting lamb. Yes. There we are. For farmers like Nigel, the bigger the lamb, the bigger the profit. So what size are the lambs that most of us will be eating this Easter? In they come, yeah, they look lovely, don't they? Yeah, nice, they big come. and plump. So Nigel, these are quite big animals. People look at these and go, right, they're sheep. Is this the kind of thing we're eating when it comes to lamb at Easter? Yeah, it is, yeah. This is a, a year old lamb, basically. I've discovered that most of the lamb we'll be eating this Easter comes from these big one year old woolies. Oh, lovely crop of lambs. I've come to meet industry expert yeah, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Phil Hadley yeah, not bad. to find out if those are the only lambs we'll be eating this Easter. Nice to meet you, Phil. Now, how old are these guys? Uh, these guys are about six weeks now. Six weeks? These will be marketed as spring lamb. OK, so what's the production system for these guys then? These were born at towards the end of January. They've been fed on mum's milk in the meantime. You can see there's some grass uh, available now, so they're taking some grass and some supplementary feed as well. Because the grass at this time of year isn't quite as abundant as it is in the, the spring and summer. We need to give them some other nutrients to uh, get that growth. Right. The feed is fortified with protein, fat, vitamins and minerals to accelerate the lamb's growth. This means that these lambs born in January will be ready for slaughter at 14 weeks old, just in time for Easter. And how much bigger will this guy be when it goes to slaughter? Uh, this will probably double in size by the time it reaches slaughter, so we're looking for a carcass of around 20 kilos. That's about the same Fair weight yeah. as a one-year-old lamb. Every lamb that comes into the abattoir is different in one way or another. So how do they guarantee they're all identically tender? To ensure consistency, there's a clever trick. They're going to now receive this electrical stimulation, which is a, which is a process to kickstart the tenderisation. And what you'll see is as the carcass touches the rail, the electric current is passed through about 300 volts. And what that does is mimic muscle contraction, like the electrical <laughs> signals in the brain, and you can see the muscles start to contract. And the purpose of that is that the muscle has energy in it in the form of glycogen, yeah. and that glycogen needs to turn to lactic acid, right. which is a normal biochemical process as, a car as, a, as an animal turns into a carcass. Yeah. And we can speed that process up by creating contractions within the muscle, which burns off the glycogen and means that the lactic acid is produced more quickly. When the lactic acid isn't fully developed, that it, it actually produces a much tougher meat. Got you. So tough meat are muscle fibres that are tightly packed and short. Tender meat is when it's relaxed and long. That's right, yeah. Because if you're killing a lot of lambs for the spring market, you want to be able to tenderise them and get them in the shops as quick as possible. Yeah, and you want them to be consistent. This is not you dressing mutton up as lamb, then? No, <laughs> it's not, no.